everyone. So we're going to be looking at how we can use Rapid API and use it with Next.js. So we're just going to grab some information. Um, this is just some planets and some information about the planets and some images as well. So we're going to use this planet info by um, noob API. So we're going to see how we can look at all this information and how we can grab it and use it in our Next.js application because it does look slightly different, um, but it's actually not that different. Once we actually start using it, you'll see how it actually works and functions, but we're going to be looking at how we can look at this documentation right here. So I just have a brand new Visual Studio code and I'm going to make a brand new project. I'll go to my desktop. Now I'll make my application. You can call this whatever you'd like. And I'm going to say no to TypeScript, no to ESLint, no, no, and just hit enter for this. And once it's done, we're just going to drag and drop this folder over. And I'm going to just make sure that this is working properly, so I'll run it. So this is on 3001. And you can see here localhost 3001 is just loading. And you can see localhost 3001. I have my bare bones basic Next.js 13 application ready. And now we are ready to code this application. So what we will first be doing is we need to look in our index.js pages. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to delete everything in between the main here. So I have an empty clean project. So you just, you should just have this bare bones structure. And what I will need to do is, so actually we could just start using the API right away because I'm not using Axios, I'm using fetch. So I could grab the information right away without installing anything else. This way, um, so let's first import use effect and use state because we will be using it in our project. And we'll save that. Now we're going to set up a data use state so we'll store all of the planet's information. And what I want to do is I need to set up a use effect because this is where I'm going to have to check once the page has loaded that we have all our information inputted into our, or we need to put all the information into our use state. So let's set up a use effect. And here at the end, I'm going to put square brackets because we only want to run this once when the page renders or loads. And this is where it's going to get interesting because we have to add the information that we have found here on on the site here. So let's take a look at it. So right here we get these code snippets and the one you want to go to right here is you want to go to Node.js and just HTTP. Um, let's actually see method Okay, let me see node. Let me try fetch. Okay, so you have the Axios or fetch way. I'm going to use the fetch. So right here, it actually tells you what we need to set up. What we will do is we will copy this. So this is just getting the information, then it's giving you this key and where it's getting that information from. So copy just this section right here. And what we are going to do is we're going to 
paste this in our use effect. Make sure you indent it nicely so it's easy to read. There we go. And right below this um, constant that we put inside, we want to fetch the information. And inside this fetch, we need to actually put the URL as to which URL we are fetching from. And to do that, we have to go back to this area here. There should be this URL right here. Actually, we could just copy this URL, copy it. And then we could just paste this actually above the use effect. And then just use that URL whenever we actually want it. So let's put URL then comma, options. After this, we just put a dot then, response, arrow, response dot json, dot then, response, And here's where I'll do the console.log response. I just want to see what's um, being responded back with. And what I'll also do here is after these brackets, I have to put the dot catch because it's going to catch any errors if there are any. Let's put console.error. error. It'll just show us what the error is if there's any. I'm going to save it and see what this console logs out. So let me go back to my page. I'll go localhost 3001 and right click and inspect. So you can see there's something in the array and in the array we can see here, we got all of the planets that we need inside here. If we expand it, you get some information about it, some links, you get an image here. That's what we'll be using later. And some other information about the mass. So this is exactly what we want. We even get an ID as well. So that's actually great because we can actually use that as a unique identifier as well. So let's try, let's actually save this in our use state now. And what we need to do is we need to set the data because we have our data use state up here. Under this console, we're just going to set up set data to response and that will fill up that data area. And now what we have to do is in the main this is where we're actually going to be displaying the information. And what I'll do here is I'll have a data. And if there is data, then we will map through it. I'll put the letter D here. And what I'll do here is I'll return some sort of information. And in the div, we are going to be adding a key. And this um, for this key, I'm going to use that unique identifier that's already given for each planet. So I could just do d.key because if we go back here, you can see here there's something called key or we could actually use id. It actually doesn't matter too much. Um, I think I'm using id for this. Let me check. No, I'm using key. So you can use either one as long as it's unique. I could put ID here. I think that should be okay too. And I'll have a title and that title will be the name. So D dot H uh, dot name, sorry. And then we're going to have a description. So we have to call that letter D dot description because the description is given right here as well. So if we look here, uh, description. So we get a description of each of the planets. We're going to grab that information and we will display it here. And I also want the image. So what I'll do is 
I'm actually going to import image from Next.js. It's actually better to use this actual image tag and then SRC. And I'll grab that image.img src position of zero because it's in an array. And dot img. And then width is, I'll put 50. Um, redefined here. Okay, so let me see. Oh, I already have an image up there, so we don't need it twice. So we should be okay like this. So let me go back over here. Okay, so it looks like it might need a height as well. All right, let me see here. Missing required height property. Okay, so let's put height as well. And let's put 50. Refresh. So let me see here. Invalid SRC prop. Okay, so I guess I just need to double check how the image tag is set up. not configured. Okay, so let me just check here, Next.js um, image. Okay. When using external URL, you must add remote patterns in Next.js config. Okay. I see. Okay, interesting. So if we want to use the image tag, we have to add this in there, okay. All right, so let's try it out. I haven't actually used this one yet, so we could give it a try. But I think below is another example. Alright, so we have to make sure it's exact pattern. So let's save this. Go to module.exports and then next.config.js next.config.js all right so it should be right here just make it equal all right, let me add images and HTTPS and this is a dot com site so let's just see what happens right now I think I might have to restart the server all right so let me just restart the server because I just recently added it in so it doesn't know yet I might have to specify the exact URL, but I will see what happens first. Okay, so it is 3001. 
upload. Okay, so the host name, I see it's upload dot wikimedia dot org. So I'm just gonna put dot org then. Alright, let me end this server, refresh it. Refresh this page as well. Alright, okay, it's working, but the image is missing required alt property. Okay, that's pretty simple to add. Um, okay, we'll just do this. We'll go back to index.js. We can do alt is equal to, I can't remember if it's with curly brace or not. Well, actually, I could add in some information then. So if it's alternative, if I go back to the site here, for the alternative, if there is, I'll just add the name, that's it. So id.name. Let's see if that works. ID is not defined. Oh wait, it's just D, the letter D. There we go. Save it. Refresh. All right, so it looks like it's working. You can see here, we just need to modify the width for some of them, but you can see we get the title, description, the um, image there. So it does work. You just need to play around with all this information, all of the different other variables, and stylizing the page. But you can see here you get a link as well, so you could add that to your project if you want as well. But hopefully this helps you guys out with your projects. And that is how you also use this API right here. So I'm using the fetch, Node.js fetch. Um, just know, looks like there is a way to work with Axios as well. And it does the exact same thing though. You can see here, you're just getting this information. And then Axios is just re requesting that information when it's needed. But this should be able to work for your Next.js application.